I am here with Jordan Hudson, a graduate of Franciscan University of Steubenville. And I met Jordan when I was working with the Knights of Columbus in Steubenville, Ohio. He was the Grand Knight of the Council on campus, and my job was to sell insurance to the Council, and I needed to get to know Jordan in order to have this happen. In the midst of meeting Jordan, I became aware of his situation, the unusual counseling that was happening on campus, and a whole host of other problems that we are going to briefly talk about today. So, Jordan, uh, thanks for checking in with us. And could you please tell everybody your name, how old you are, where you're living, and the, the years you were at Franciscan? No, my name is Jordan Hudson. I'm 31 years old. I'm currently living in Wareshaw, South Carolina, right outside of Greenwood. And I was a student at Franciscan from 2010 to 2013. Okay. And at that time, uh, you were receiving counseling and prayer support from Father David Morier, T.O.R., is that correct? Yes, that was during my last semester of college, right before I graduated. Okay, so we, we know that Father David Morier, Morier has been charged with rape uh, of a student who was also receiving counseling at the same time that you were on campus. Uh-huh. And we know that he has a right to a fair trial. But was there anything unusual about the counseling that you were going through that raised red flags for you with David Morier. Yes. As a matter of fact, it was. Because no, normally, Father David Morier would counsel women, but he took me in, too. Basically, because um, I was battling, I mean, I guess still am to a certain extent, battling with homosexuality, same-sex attraction. And he immediately, with his discerner, Cynthia Makita, who was employee of the Dicey of Steubenville, told me I was possessed with, like, 13 evil spirits or demons. And I started doing exorcisms, doing ministry with this jewel kit, and then hung me, hung me up in the middle and tried to silence me. He, from saying a word... Post born in the spirit retreat, I went on. Okay, so while you were attending Franciscan University and you were the Grand Knight, you were seeking counseling because you were struggling with, did you say homosexuality? Yes, I did. Okay, so what were you hoping to accomplish through going through counseling? Because I was fine. Well, for one thing, I was, at the time, I was in the middle of vocational discernment. Okay. And why did you feel that you needed counseling? Because um, there's all sorts of issues, not just homosexuality, but I was also bullied and victim growing up all through school. Um, I'm a victim of sexual abuse who from a next door neighbor in middle school I was in the Boy Scouts working on merit badge which currently I've got a suit claim filed on that and then was abused by a gay college professor from my first college I went to back in 08 for one semester and also in high school just Issue after issue after issue. Okay. So the counseling you received and the direction and the guidance that they gave you was to go through a series of exorcism prayers? Basically. Okay. Except for my actual counselor on campus, Matt Burris, who was going Catholic, was phenomenal. Loved him to death. Okay. So, was Matt encouraging you to get exorcisms as well? No, but 
but he he did help Father Dave Moya out a lot to understand what was happening to me. It's just like when he was, when Father Dave was get, going through exorcism, it's like I was going to the whole another u- universe for the sake of argument. Okay. So you also have been uh, on the autistic uh, spectrum, is that correct? Well, not officially diagnosed because it did not exist at the time that I would have been diagnosed. So you've had... My my mom says that she thinks I'm on the mild end. So you've had some struggles, learning disabilities, that type yeah, of thing. ADD. Uh huh. And now, because of all this mess that happened to me in, in Duvalville, I'm now diagnosed with schizophrenia. Okay. So which is crazy. Gotcha. Um. So during your time, your spiritual life there, I know that you were, uh, just like everyone else on campus, subjected to. The, the San Damiano cross everywhere you turned, every chapel you went into, every classroom. Uh, it's it's the only crucifix they, they allow on campus, but it's not even really a crucifix, it's an icon. But can you tell everybody what, uh, what happened to you while meditating on that icon? After my young friend, Tom Vendidi, who's do an interview with me, he told me about what he seen. At first, I didn't believe it. I was like, excuse me, do what? So I did my own research and looked at pictures and videos. I like, sure enough, there it is. Now, I don't have one physically and never will I, but that cross, that crucifix cross, idol, whatever you want to put it, it was kind of in, on my mind, in my head so to speak. And it, it, was, it was like, because of the male genitalia that's on that crucifix around the stomach area, I was tempted strongly to do, let's say, do inappropriate stuff, to be honest. I mean, for two nights in a row, I mean, the temptation was so strong that it just, it literally just overpowered me. Okay. Now, previously, before you knew about the phallic symbol on the icon, uh-huh. did you ever pray before it previously? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I went to Tuesday night praise and worship. And I went to Pops, and there was like one of them, essentially. We all were. And And what kind of devotion did you show to this? Icon. Outside of them, um, praise and worship, pops, I guess, praying in the fort, chapel, and not too much, and of course, Sunday church. Okay. Not too much. And can you describe a FOP, a festival of praise, and the Damiano? What what purpose did the Damiano serve at a festival of praise? Because knowing it's Franciscan University, they got a big old Damiano hanging up in the field house. Festival of praise is like, I guess, a big version of Tuesday night praise and worship. So what would they do specifically with the San Damiano cross during the it's festival like, of praise? It was like during big old like festival of praise music, people would raise their hands like toward their crucifix. It's all they were worshiping male genitalia in a sense. Okay. Type, type of thing. So are you <clears throat> glad that you know about the phallic symbol on the San Damiano, or would you have preferred never to have known about it? Oh, I'm I'm glad I know the truth because I have come out of public stand against it, but it's certain that it kind of makes me sick to my stomach. Okay, so, um, but overall, you think it's a good thing to expose what's going on there? Yes, I do because. 
because I believe the root of all these issues, even sexual abuse, has been happening even up to two or three years after I graduated. And the current administration, like Catherine Heck and things like that, if she's still there, I'm not sure if she's still there or not, but they're not doing anything about it except, oh, except for, oh, I'm sorry, we'll put a no contact order. And that's that. Not really going to handle things legally. Okay. And seeking justice. That kind of makes me upset that even my alma mater is at university. Yeah.